Ramsey's going on tour down under to promote his latest book, but trouble's brewing. I'm just gonna need one idiot to start, you know, getting on the wrong side of me, and I'm gonna snap. Day one, Brisbane. Ramsey's been invited to star at the Hilton Masterclass. We've been trying to lure Gordon for a few years now, and we've thrilled that he could come for the 2000 Masterclass. After a gruelling 37-hour journey, Ramsey's already behind schedule. He's set to embark on his rock and roll book tour. And just 15 minutes after arrival, it's his first interview of the week. And he's decided to be provocative about Aussie chefs. There's a lot of um, sort of um, talk about Australian chefs back in, uh, in London. Of course, Australians have no loyalty. You know, they, they, they come with their backpacks. Yeah. <laughs> Ready to go they, back. They, they cram in, you know, 16 or 17 chefs in a, in a two-metre square room. They don't pay fucking rent. They don't pay their poll tax. They grab all the knowledge they can, and they disappear. <laughs> that gets on my tits. So after letting off some steam, Ramsey goes down to the hotel kitchen to find some Australian chefs with a view to a spot of Ramseying. I want your tray organised tonight, so yeah, as we come in tomorrow, way, I'm, not, uh, I'm not leaving. Tomorrow's going to be an absolute fucking disaster. Oh, really? Yeah, big time. OK, good. So all go, go, go. Ramsey's left his sous chef and travelling companion, David Hector Dempsey, to start organising the next day's demonstration. Yeah, what a fucking day, man. Shit. But there are a few comprehension problems hindering the process. Paper, pills. Paper, huh? paper, 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 and Ramsey's already found something to target Hector about. He's been drinking when we boarded the plane this afternoon. The server came round with his tray of drinks. He said, what would you like, Mr Ramsey? I said, I have a glass of orange juice. Thinking David would follow on, but no, David had champagne. At least, that's Ramsey's story. He told me, I take a couple of drinks, you're okay. So I had a, I had a few drinks in the plane. But then it worked. Just took a car of sleep and then I woke up with a sore head. And whilst Hector's working away, Ramsey's playing the celeb and having a drink or two himself. But he can't resist checking up on his protege, who's still slogging away at the cooking. He's going to be stiffs there. There's more stiffs in there than there is in Madame Dussault. There's some sleep there. Time. Honey. Hold on. He's lying. Hold on. Right. So we haven't we, we stopped playing. Yeah, no. So it's a. Uh... He gets really ratty and gets all nasty when he hasn't slept. Is that right? Yeah. He's got a temper like a, a real Scotsman. Day 2, 8am. Ramsey's newspaper comments on Australian chefs have outraged Brisbane. Now he's got to face a whole panel of critics, but he's denying the allegations. As we know, if we've seen the Courier Mail this morning, he already has opinions on Australian food. Please welcome Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Coming today, uh, very briefly, in the paper, has obviously got into hot water. I can tell you. <laughs> uh, I was asked about um, Australians in London, not how do I feel about Australian food. A little bit unfair, having been here 45 minutes with the journalist <laughs> family. <and Michael. laughs> But Ramsey's found an enemy on the panel, ex-rock writer turned foodie, Cherry Ripe. Within 15 minutes he was running off at the mouth about Australian food before he'd even put a mouthful in his mouth. We certainly have plenty of people who can cook and some of the most exciting and innovative food in the world. But uh, no, Gordon felt that he could comment on it before he'd ever tasted it. That javelin thrower through there, the Fatima Whitbread, um, Aussie rules, OK. Um, she, uh, yeah, she, she's just trying to provoke a reaction. She wants a flare-up because I know it's going to hit the papers. And uh, <coughs> she already told me how detrimental I was uh, to Australian chefs uh, in the newspaper today. The same afternoon, Ramsay's first cooking demonstration. This is Hector's real test of the trip, but at least everything is ready. Come on, big man, we've got to go. We've got to question it, Dave. Not now, yeah, because ten minutes time, I'm going to look fucking stupid. 
However, it's also Ramsey's opportunity to try and humiliate Cherry Ripe. Good afternoon and uh, welcome. Turn that phone off straight away. Thank you. Was that Cherry? No. no. But it was on. Yeah, that's it. In Gordon's cooking demonstration class, he, he obviously had latched on to my name, which, you know, I've lived with for long enough. I'm a big girl, I can take it. Ramsey's found out that Cherry Ripe's name is also that of an Aussie chocolate bar, and he's planning further public torment. Nice to see you, Cherry. How much did it cost for that name? <laughs> what is your real name? <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Ramsey's on a roll. He's been treated like a major celebrity with a string of interviews and book signings, and even Hector's in on the limelight. But undeterred by the fact that Cherry Ripe is also a celeb, Ramsey's declaring war. The evening of day two. Anyone who's anyone in Brisbane has gathered for the Queensland Mud Crab Festival. And Ramsey's already got into another argument with Cathy Snowball, food editor of magazine Gourmet Traveller. She's refused to review Ramsey's friend Donovan's cookbook. Donovan used to work for uh, Marco for four years and he's a big success over here in Melbourne. And he's got a wonderful restaurant called Estes Dest and he's got one of the best cookery books ever published, especially in the last two years. And um, the book was a big success uh, back in the UK, and um, she won't review it because she thinks he's pretentious. And uh, it's the first time in 18 months he's actually had the chance to sort of turn around and ask face to face. I'm asking you a blind question. If you're behind chefs in Australia, why aren't you reviewing a chef's book? Because... <laughs> because you're allowing your emotions to take preference over his book. I thought... You've got it in for him personally. Tell him you're jealous of the restaurant. He has more customers pass through each week than you sell magazines over 10 years. Tell him in front of you now. No, Fucking words like that. Right. OK. And, and, you know, I'll be shot down in flames and I'll go down... So you're going to give us a proper answer now? Yes, I'm going to give you the Oh, this is the second answer. answer. The proper okay. answer. Go on, then. I think better. So I can... I can... The design is bloody stupid. All that big, big thing. Christ. You've got very good recipes. You've got lovely food. But what's contrived? What's contrived? Listen. Fuck the design. Look at the food. No, fuck the design. You won the award. Yeah. As it gets heated, Ramsey can't bear to be left out. There's some more crab in your hair, sweetheart. Review the bloody book. <laughs> For God's sake, stop being a bloody snob! Okay. Time. Woo, hallelujah. But there's worse yet to come. I'm not going to take it from us. I'm just going to give her a hard time. Yeah. Were you not becoming vicious and, and, and personal to Donovan? You called him pretentious? I'm not calling you pretentious. I can take that, sweetheart. Okay, okay. okay. She's obviously wound up. No, you can't. You're obviously <laughs> Having been here one day, I don't need <laughs> chefs sat here playing with my nuts. <laughs> I think the critics here have bigger egos than um, every food critic back in the UK combined with the Sunday Times, with the um, Evening Standard. Um, not only got a pathological dislike of, of um, food writers, but I really think that he baits us to get more publicity. As the dinner becomes more and more argumentative, Ramsey's getting personal. I just want your books and I want to review it. That's why you're in years. That's why you're so fucking famous. <laughs> no, no, no. He's a shithead. He's not even going to be nice to you. He's not going to be nice to you just to get your credit. I may yeah, stay for that. Bloody book, I, seen I thought you said you've got it, you were about to review no it. Send me your I'd pay you money to slate it, you know that. Can I can I ask one request before we close the conversation? Yes. Throughout my demonstration tomorrow, there's no swearing. It puts me off when I'm trying to demonstrate. 
Day three, and off to Sydney. <laughs> what? Oh, shit. Too much money, not enough sense. Yeah, that's fine. That's champagne, but the shoe bag, come on. Ramsey's straight off the plane and into a shoot to promote his book with famous photographer Jeff Lung. Still jet lagged and having spent a hectic weekend in Brisbane, Ramsey's set for another spate with a critic. And he's found his match in Sue Fairley Cunningham. They start to argue about an Australian chef that Sue says Ramsey wouldn't let into his restaurant. Bullshit. I mean, I haven't got a clue what you're on about. Because, I, I mean, so you sent me a fax. No, I didn't send you a fax. So who, who Somebody, made the point of contact? One of your friends rang you and they uh -huh. said, you just said you didn't have room. Well, tell me who it is and I'll tell you whether it's true or not. Because I haven't got no recollection of that at all. Who's the chef? Neil Perry. The man with the ponytail? Oh. I can't remember that. It's a pity. Someone said, I don't give a flying fuck. That wasn't very fair. That does not sound like me. Although Ramsey denied knowledge of the incident to Sue Fairley Cunningham's face, the truth is a bit closer to the bone. The place was completely full. Mm -hmm. So I said, is that that Australian chef with a long ponytail? He said, yeah, that's right, that's him. I said, tell him to fuck off. Sorry. So why didn't you tell her the truth? Why didn't I tell her the truth? She knows the truth, or we can tell her. She knows the truth. I just don't like. I, I just don't like being pulled over a barrel like that. She's talking out of a bloody yeah. pinstripe ring piece. Will Ramsey get his revenge on the food critics? And amidst the pressure of his book tour, how can he cope with a female stalker? But will the stress of misbehaving take its toll? And who's the guy that the bad boy of cooking really has it in for? Christ, I was pissed, I tell you. Ramsey's whirlwind tour of Australia continues. The thing that intimidates me is that kind of feeling that, you know, 12,500 miles away from your hometown, that you're uh, just as popular over here as you are um, back in the UK. Popular? With 80 interviews in seven days, Ramsey's making quite an impression. Gordon Ramsey, nice to have you. Don't give a fig. But can he hold it down? Day four, Sydney, and the crammed schedule is beginning to take its toll on Ramsey. At a literary dinner that evening, Ramsey bumps into an old enemy, food critic Cherry Ripe. Ramsey's determined to provoke an argument, and his after-dinner speech is the perfect opportunity as Cherry takes the bait. Do you think that people will be able to go home, buy this book tonight, go home, open it and cook from it successfully? Yeah. Um, yes, I, I mean, of course I do. Um, I think it's, I mean, they've got a wonderful, there's a pea, pea and ham soup, uh, things like cherry soup with, um, cherry soup. <laughs> <laughs> Cherry soup with some real shitty Mars bar chopped up on top of it. This time, Ramsey's gone too far. After dinner, there's a full-blown incident in the hotel lobby. Good. He was sitting around a table with about six or eight other people, and there was a spare seat next to him, so I said, do you mind if I sit down? I've been leaving you messages all day. I just want to confirm these two quotes. And he denied having said the first one, and I was asked to leave before I could confirm the second one. She started, to start, started getting quite aggressive with Gordon um, and he was retaliating and it was sort of escalating a bit out of control and Gordon sort of looked at me and was like, you know, and I sort of stood up then and said, uh, thanks very much and we're sort of now, our, our day's over, we've had a long day, Cherry Ripe, and I think it's best if you leave. On my way over and like, Cherry Ripe sort of grabbed me. <laughs> She's like, you... I've been nothing but abused all weekend by your boss. She wanted to have her say and explain her side of the story and everything, which I sort of appreciate. However, the forum wasn't quite right. That cherry ripe's venom. And she's like, I won't be shaking your hand. Well, it was just completely unnecessary and, and rude, you know, just the way he throws Joan Collins out of restaurants. Why, why would you throw me out for trying to check a quote? Uh, it's amazing how these, how these people act out here. You know, all these food critics, they're enough. I've got really big fucking egos, you know what I mean? And it's as if they're all, it's like fucking Gordon's this big sort of icon, this kind of, he's a big rock star and everybody wants to fucking, you know what I mean, interview him, everyone wants to be with him. And it's got to the stage of actually fucking fighting over him, which I find quite amusing. 
Ramsey's revelling in the attention, but even he's had enough. If I go there tonight and change my upset, I'm going to say to the organiser, either she goes or I go. I'm not going to sit there when and I watch. ring Sue then, I'll yeah. ring her and tell her that. Yeah. Okay? If she's there, I'm going. Day five, Melbourne, and the tour has taken an unexpected twist. It's emerged that Ramsey's being followed round Australia by a stalker, and she's trailed him to his hotel. She's been phoning him at all hours, and Ramsey's beginning to get scared. Jesus Christ. It's a bit of an eerie feeling, really. It's just not a nice uh, feeling. Uh, when someone's watching you so closely... Um... I mean, think of it, I mean, she, she, she was in Brisbane, now she's in bloody, uh, she's in Melbourne, you know what I mean? We had to tell the receptions last night to screen the calls. I think that was important because that was uh, twice last night, ten past one in the morning, <laughs> just when you think it's safe to get to bed, and the phone goes. The news has even hit the papers. Okay, I was not getting a bit too much, this. Do you feel like you're a real celeb now you've got a soccer? Uh, I don't feel a real celeb at all, no. I actually feel quite concerned, really. Ten to two this morning, um... 11.30 at night whilst in the bar having a, a quick bite to eat and a drink with some friends. Um, I'm, I'm actually glad we're on that six o'clock flight tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if we get to New Zealand, there's any trace over there, <laughs> I'll go fucking bananas. Gordon Ramsay is a tough chef. Uh, if you know the book of chef for all seasons, you'll know Gordon Ramsay is a perfectionist. We've got someone called Gordon Ramsay, and if you dare say who, I'll be in big trouble. Boiling points delivered international fame. Gordon Ramsay, welcome to the programme. Thank you. Hi. The Rock Tour continues with Ramsay's fourth city in a week. I like the flick of the hair. I think that's quite nice. No sign of the stalker, but Ramsay finds he's become a sex symbol. He's tall, he's <laughs> carries himself well, and he's nice looking. Fans are following him to every gig. Here they take it to the next year. No, it's been a fucking movie star or something. Day six and off to New Zealand. The schedule's been changed at the last minute and Ramsey is greeted with the news that he's to appear on New Zealand's premier chat show with their biggest celebrity, Paul Holmes. And they're on air in an hour. Ramsey's stormed off, leaving Hector to man the fort. As usual. We're just taking the piss. We're not actually in New Zealand. We're in bloody Dundee. We've done a detour. We're in Dundee. That's why, hence the weather. Anyway, um, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Similarly, where they're going down is, they've changed it. So we need to go to the studio, film at half past two, pre record it for tonight to go live at seven. Where's Gordon gone? And Gordon's gone to the hotel, very pissed off. Hector's getting nervous and he's worried about being Ramsey'd. I wouldn't be surprised if he, doesn't, if he goes fucking mad because, I mean, what the fuck is this shit, man? The ingredients aren't right and time's running out. Well, in a moment for you, you will like this. Gordon Ramsay, rude, aggressive, savage on his staff, brilliant in the kitchen. Gordon Ramsay is next. Hector's managed to replace sea bass with salmon and he's off the hook. His boss, Ramsey, arrives just before Kiwi mega-celebrity Paul Holmes. With five minutes to go before they're on air, Ramsey's getting the star treatment from his host, who's even doing his makeup. Great result of rugby last weekend. Although I don't think it'll be that easy this Saturday against the Springboks. Don't you? No. Well, you know, you're a palm. What would you fucking know? <laughs> Holmes and Ramsey seem to be getting along famously, and the banter bodes well. So, look at this. Here we are at Cafe... Vino Tica. Those are funny names, don't they? The you know, places that are selling food and stuff to do with that. And uh, look, specially made chef jacket. Over here is my new friend, Gordon Ramsay. Let me introduce you to people around here. This is one of Britain's finest chefs ever, perhaps the finest British chef ever. Gordon Ramsay. I know that because he's telling me before. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. No, 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 don't start. Don't start. They're after the sign, aren't they? Cloth. They are. I tell kids to fuck off now if they come up to with a t shirt. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> he is one of the, the highest rating current affairs um, host in New Zealand. So he's mm -hmm. New Zealand's equivalent to Terry Whiting, basically. And how long has the show been running? The show's been running now for about 10 years. 10 years. And he's yeah. been there. He's been, he's been on, he has been that. He's built oh, it up from, cool. from the start. Yeah. So he's, he's a little bit. He looks a bit like Ronnie Corbett. He does look a bit like Ronnie No, he's not. I think he does. Yeah. He's like he's yeah. Yeah. So now he's New Zealand's celebrity TV person. Day 7, Auckland. Ramsey's had a change of heart about Paul Holmes and has decided he doesn't like him. Though he hasn't seen the show, Ramsey's broadcasting his opinion to the New Zealand public. I know you've only been here for a day, but any thoughts on New Zealand cuisine? 
I'm not too impressed with Paul Holmes, put it that way. <laughs> what, his cooking skills? <laughs> well, no both cuisine. really. You had a dodgy assistant last night, though, I'd have to say. Uh, yeah, slightly dodgy. <laughs> he looks a bit better now, uh, out of his chef's jacket. Listen, it is great to have you here, though. You're damn sight more entertaining than Paul Holmes, that's for sure. <laughs> we won't go there. That is until he bumps into Paul Holmes in the TVNZ makeup room. Not bad. You didn't see me. Yeah. Hello, Paul. Hey, good. Fine, how are you? Are you brushed off with me? No, I'm not pissed off with you. I'm pissed off with the person who edited that program. What happened? I haven't seen it yet. I'm going back to the hotel in ten minutes to watch it. I'll give you a call. Why are you pissed off with it? Sorry? Why are you pissed off? Because I've just been targeted all day how negative, how bad it was. I haven't seen it yet. Who's telling you that? TVNZ. <laughs> well, it's not. Gordon, come down to the office. Come down to the home's office. Have a look at it. I'll tell him. Why stand there getting an argument with someone that's, you know, three and a half foot tall? He insisted on seeing me in his office. I mean, big deal, big cheese. So, you know, I, I perhaps wrongly left through the back door, sneaked out the back door because, hey, if I got into com confrontation with a guy, I'd end up lumping him. And he'd become two and a half foot tall, then I would be in trouble. Well, I'm a controversial figure in this country, you know. I am, and um, <clears throat> and and I and I try and be innovative in the in the approach I take, and I try and do things in a sort of a new way. I've been doing this program eleven years. I try not to get stale. Uh, I try to. I mean, I th it was a fairly radical sort of approach for Gordon. I know he just got off the plane, but he seemed to enjoy it. Thought the interview was tacky. I thought he was a prat, and I had to sort of laugh it off with him. Walk out there now, and get him. I'll have him on, and say, what's this about? Don't you bloody start this with me. Try that for your bullshit for your kitchen in London. Not here. Ramsey's visit down under isn't going to be forgotten in a hurry. There's a consensus among food writers that um, we should just leave him alone next time, not bother writing about him. Has Ramsey burned all his bridges? If it asked you to go again, would you go? Uh, probably not. Next week on Beyond Boiling Point, Ramsey glitters with a literati. Gets one up on Marco. He'll be on the phone to me, giving me a hard time. Why the fuck didn't you tell me? <laughs> and there are happy days for Marcus, but has the worm turned for Ramsey? There's a point where you have to stop. And there's no way on earth, young man, you're even going to attempt to make me look fucking stupid. Let's get that right. Some friends. Um, I'm, I'm actually glad we're on that six o'clock flight tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if we get to New Zealand, there's any trace over there, <laughs> I'll go fucking bananas. Gordon Ramsay is a tough chef. Uh, if you know the book A Chef for All Seasons, you'll know Gordon Ramsay is a perfectionist. We've got someone called Gordon Ramsay, and if you dare say who, I'll be in big trouble. Boiling Points delivered international fame. Gordon Ramsay, welcome to the programme. Thank you. Hi. The Rock Tour continues with Ramsay's fourth city in a week. I like the flick of the hair. I think that's quite nice. No sign of the stalker, but Ramsay finds he's become a sex symbol. He's tall, he's <laughs> carries himself well, and he's nice looking. Fans are following him to every gig. I'm here to take it to a totally finish soon. You know, it's like being a fucking movie star or something. Day six and off to New Zealand. The schedule's been changed at the last minute and Ramsey is greeted with the news that he's to appear on New Zealand's premier chat show with their biggest celebrity, Paul Holmes. And they're on air in an hour. Ramsey's stormed off, leaving Hector to man the fort as usual. We're just taking the piss. We're not actually in New Zealand. We're in bloody Dundee. We've done a detour and we're in Dundee. That's why, hence the weather. Anyway, um, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Similarly where the guy down is, they've changed it, so we need to go to the studio, film at half past two, pre-record it for tonight. Last night to screen the calls, I think that was important because that was uh, twice last night, ten past one in the morning. <laughs> just when you think it's safe to get to bed and the phone goes. 
The news has even hit the papers. Okay, I was not getting a bit too much of this. Do you feel like you're a real celeb now? You've got a stalker. Uh, I don't feel a real celeb at all now. I actually feel quite concerned, really. Ten to two this morning. Um, 11.30 at night whilst in the bar having a, a quick bite to eat and a drink with some friends. Um, I'm, I'm actually glad we're on that six o'clock flight tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if we get to New Zealand, there's any trace over there, I'll go fucking bananas. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay is a tough chef. Uh, if you know the book A Chef for All Seasons, you'll know Gordon Ramsay is a perfectionist. We've got someone called Gordon Ramsay, and if you dare say who, I'll be in big trouble. Boiling points delivered international fame. Gordon Ramsay, welcome to the programme. Thank you. Hi. The Rock Tour continues with Ramsay's fourth city in a week. I like the flick of the hair. I think that's quite nice. No sign of the stalker, but Ramsey finds he's become a sex symbol. He's tall, he's <laughs> carries himself well, and he's nice looking. Fans are following him to every gig. I'm here to take it to the next year. No, it's been a fucking movie star or something. Day six and off to New Zealand. The schedule's been changed at the last minute, and Ramsey is greeted with the news that he's to appear on New Zealand's premier chat show with their biggest celebrity, Paul. As I was uh, to Australian chefs uh, in the newspaper today. The same afternoon, Ramsey's first cooking demonstration. This is Hector's real test of the trip, but at least everything is ready. Come on, big man, we've got to go. We've got to question it, Dave, and not now, yeah? Because ten minutes' time, we're going to look fucking stupid. Yeah, sure. However, it's also Ramsey's opportunity to try and humiliate Cherry Ripe. Good afternoon and uh, welcome. Turn that phone off straight away. Thank you. Was that Cherry? No. Hey. But it was on. It yeah, that's it. In Gordon's cooking demonstration class, he, he obviously had latched on to my name, which, you know, I've lived with for long enough. I'm a big girl, I can take it. Ramsey's found out that Cherry Ripe's name is also that of an Aussie chocolate bar, and he's planning further public torment. Nice to see you, Cherry. How much does it cost for that name? <laughs> what is your real name? <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Ramsey's on a roll. He's been treated like a major celebrity with a string of interviews and book signings, and even Hector's in on the limelight. But undeterred by the fact that Cherry Ripe is also a celeb, Ramsey's declaring war. <laughs> 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 Ramsey's on a roll. He's been treated like a major celebrity with a string of interviews and book signings and even Hector's in on the limelight. But undeterred by the fact that Cherry Ripe is also a celeb, Ramsey's declaring war. The evening of day two. Anyone who's anyone in Brisbane has gathered for the Queensland Mud Crab Festival. And Ramsey's already got into another argument with Cathy Snowball, food editor of magazine Gourmet Traveller. She's refused to review Ramsey's friend Donovan's cookbook. Donovan used to work for uh, Marco for four years, and he's a big success over here in Melbourne. And he's got a wonderful restaurant called Estes Dest, and he's got one of the best cookery books ever published, especially in the last two years. And um, the book was a big success. Um, back in the UK, and um, she won't review it because she thinks he's pretentious. And uh, it's the first time in 18 months he's actually had the chance to sort of turn around and ask her face to face. I'm asking you a blind question. If you're behind chefs in Australia, why aren't you reviewing a chef's book? Because, <laughs> because you're allowing your emotions to take preference over his book. Enough, straight away. Thank you. Was that Cherry? No. But it was on. Yeah, that's it. In Gordon's cooking demonstration class, he, he obviously had latched on to my name, which, you know, I've lived with for long enough. I'm a big girl, I can take it. Ramsey's found out that Cherry Ripe's name is also that of an Aussie chocolate bar, and he's planning further public torment. Nice to see you, Cherry. How much does it cost for that name? <laughs> what is your real name? <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Look. 
Ramsey's on a roll. He's been treated like a major celebrity with a string of interviews and book signings and even Hector's in on the limelight. But undeterred by the fact that Cherry Ripe is also a celeb, Ramsey's declaring war. The evening of day two. Anyone who's anyone in Brisbane has gathered for the Queensland Mud Crab Festival. And Ramsey's already got into another argument with Cathy Snowball, food editor of magazine Gourmet Traveller. She's refused to review Ramsey's friend Donovan's cookbook. Donovan used to work for uh, Marco for four years and he's a big... Okay. Okay. Woo, hallelujah. But there's worse yet to come. I'm not going to take it from us. I'm just going to give her a hard time. Yeah. Were you not becoming vicious and, and, and personal to Donovan? Are you called him pretentious? I'm not calling you pretentious. I can take that, sweetheart. Okay, you <laughs> Okay, okay. She's obviously wound up. No, you can't. You're welcome. Having been here one day, I don't need <laughs> chefs sat here playing with my nuts. <laughs> I think the critics here have bigger egos than um, every food critic back in the UK combined with the Sunday Times, with the um, Evening Standard. Um, not only got a pathological dislike of, of um, food writers, but I really think that he baits us to get more publicity. As the dinner becomes more and more argumentative, Ramsay's getting personal. I just want your board, and I want to review it. Okay. I may stay for that. I thought you said you've got it, you were about to review it. In a week. I like the flick of the hair. I think that's quite nice. No sign of the stalker, but Ramsey finds he's become a sex symbol. He's tall, he's <laughs> carries himself well and he's nice looking. Fans are following him to every gig. I'm here to take it to the next year. Oh, it's been a fucking movie star or something. Day six and off to New Zealand. The schedule's been changed at the last minute and Ramsey is greeted with the news that he's to appear on New Zealand's premier chat show with their biggest celebrity, Paul Holmes. And they're on air in an hour. Ramsey stormed off, leaving Hector to man the fort as usual. We're just taking the piss. We're not actually in New Zealand. We're in bloody Dundee. We've done a detour. We're in Dundee. That's why, hence the weather. Anyway, um, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Similarly, where they're going down is, they've changed it, so we need to go to the studio, film at half past two, pre record it for tonight to go live at seven. Where's Gordon done? And Gordon's gone to the hotel, very pissed off. Hector's getting nervous and he's worried about being Ramsey'd. I wouldn't be surprised if he, doesn't, if he goes fucking mad because, I mean, what the fuck is this shit, man? The ingredients aren't right and time's running out. Well, in a moment for you, you will like this. Gordon Ramsay, rude, aggressive, savage on his staff, brilliant in the kitchen. Gordon Ramsay is next. Hector's managed to replace sea bass with salmon and he's off the hook. His boss, 